The historic Pillar House at 615 Elm Street in Eudora, Kansas is a famous Eudora area landmark. The Pilla House was built in 1894 by Charles Pilla, a German immigrant and the owner of the Pilla Department Store at 701 Main Street in Eudora. The Pilla House is a prime example of the Queen Anne architectural style. The Pilla House is one of the best preserved 19th century homes in Kansas. In this short film produced by the Eudora Area Historical Society, you will learn about the history of the house, you will learn about the history of the Pilla family. You will also be treated to a tour of the house by the house's current owners, Sue and Monty Pearson, and you will also be able to see an interview with Sue and Monty Pearson regarding their ownership of the house. Please enjoy. The first Pilla to arrive in Eudora, Kansas was Frederick Pilla, the brother of Charles Pilla. Both Pilla brothers were born in Bavaria, Germany. Charles Pilla had gone to public schools in Bavaria and later had a dire apprenticeship in Germany before he immigrated to the United States in 1849 at the age of 19. Charles Pilla settled in New York City where he clerked at a clothing store and then worked at a book bindery before moving to Eudora. Charles Pilla got married in Staten Island, New York in 1865 to Alice Smith of Factoryville. They went on to have several children. Charles Pilla moved to Eudora by 1865 Charles was appointed as postmaster in Eudora in 1871. Pilla had been working in the mercantile business established in 1862 by his brother Frederick, who came to Eudora before Charles did. The store's name changed from Pilla Brothers after the death of Frederick in 1871. The store they operated, the Pilla Department Store, was the largest and most prosperous business in Eudora. The building they built at 701 Main Street still exists today and is locally known as the Pilla Building. Besides the store, Pillow was one of the principal stockholders and co contributors of a sweet corn factory, co-owner of the Stadler Brick Manufacturing Business, a stockholder in the Lice Chemical Works in Lawrence, principal stockholder as well as the director of the Eudora Creamery Company, and president of the State Bank of Eudora. Charles Pillow was a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, the Eudora School Board, the Eudora Lodge 42, the Doric Lodge 83. Pilla was active in helping German immigrants as they moved to Eudora and was a generous patron of many immigrants in Eudora. Charles was one of the richest men in Eudora, and the money he generated from all of his businesses allowed him to build the Pilla House. The Pilla House is considered by many to be the most elaborate and best constructed home in Eudora. The lumber from which the home was built was cut from the timber on the various Pilla farms, Charles Pilla was an extensive landowner, as well as the owner of many businesses. The roughly sawed boards of oak and walnut were taken to Lawrence to the planning mill for finishing and thorough curing. There is a basement under the entire building with a heavy foundation of perfectly laid stone. The house stands firmly without a crack in the plaster and with every beam and board squarely in place, a monument to the man who built it and a symbol of the thoroughness and efficiency of the craftsmen of that era. As one approaches this clapboard mansion perched on its hilltop location, one feels the majesticness of this house. The sensitive and careful attention to detail inside the house is attributed to Charles Pilla. Hardwoods were used throughout the rooms. Much of it was cut from property owned by Charles Pilla. Some of the woods used throughout the house include fruit wood, walnut, oak, and cherry. Cabinet casings and fireplace trim were done in matching woods. Marble was used extensively throughout the house. Two corner fireplaces on the main floor were made of Italian marble in flowered patterns. The dining room fireplace was trimmed in fruit wood, while the one in the parlor was trimmed in walnut. The main stair railing was built of oak bolsters and handrail. The openness of the rail added a spacious feeling to the entrance hall. In the second floor bath was a large Victorian bathtub complete with clawed footed legs. A mahogany rim completed the tub which was flanked by a marble lavatory. Brass hardware throughout the house completes the feeling of elegance generated by the marble and hardwoods. Charles Pilla was one of the outstanding merchants in Eudora and his success in his various companies enabled him to save the money that was required to build this luxurious mansion in the small town of Eudora, Kansas. This magnificent house stands as a monument to the determination of early Kansans to establish the state as a crossroad of an expanding nation. The Pilla House included servants' quarters as well as the first toilet in Eudora. Even though the house had a toilet, it also had an outhouse, which would have to be used during times of drought. 
The room extension at the rear of the house was used as a summer kitchen. In an age when meals were prepared year-round on wood or coal-fired cook stoves and air conditioning hadn't even been dreamed of, a summer kitchen kept the heat out of the main part of the house. Charles's wife, Alice, died in 1899. Charles died in 1916. After the deaths of Alice and Charles, the house was owned by Mulvina Pilla, one of the children of the Pillas. Mulvina, also known as Mulvey, had the reputation as being a very private, reclusive person. During the long time in which Mulvina Pilla owned the house, few people ever went inside the house. Children were sometimes allowed in to take piano lessons, Otherwise, the house was somewhat mysterious to many people in the Eudora community. Mulvina Pilla died in 1964. After the death of Mulvina Pilla, the house was owned by the Snyder family from the early 60s until 1976. In the early 1970s, the Snyder family successfully got the house listed on the State and National Register of Historic Places. The Pilla House was the first building in the entire Eudora area to be listed on the State and National Registers. In 1976, the house was purchased by Sue and Norman Fulcher. The Fulchers went on to rehab most of the house in the ensuing years. The house continues to be owned by Sue, now known as Pearson, and her husband, Monty Pearson. Sue and Norman Fulcher and Sue and Monty Pearson deserve a ton of credit for continuing to keep this house in pristine condition. The Pilla House is today regarded as an icon of Eudora and one of the better preserved houses from the 19th century in Kansas, thanks solely to the hard work that Sue and Norman Fulcher, as well as Sue and Monty Pearson, have committed to the house since 1976. Do tunnels connect the Pilla House to other buildings in downtown Eudora? Many people in the Eudora community believe that tunnels do indeed connect the Pilla House to other buildings, in downtown Eudora. In all likelihood, if tunnels do connect the Pilla House to other buildings in downtown Eudora, they were built as utility tunnels. In the next section of this short film, we will review the various theories regarding the existence of tunnels in downtown Eudora and the tunnels that connect the Pilla House to other buildings. Many people in Eudora believe there are tunnels that connect several of the buildings in downtown Eudora to each other. Several people have even theorized that these tunnels would have been used on the Underground Railroad. However, it is important to note that there is no evidence that the Eudora community had any connection to the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was, of course, used to help slaves escape from the South to freedom in the North. Eudora, as a German immigrant community, was not an abolitionist community. That is to say, people in Eudora were not necessarily concerned with the efforts to end slavery. People in Eudora were staunchly pro-Union, but they were not abolitionists. Furthermore, all of the buildings in downtown Eudora were built after the end of slavery in 1865. Furthermore, the Underground Railroad wasn't literally underground. So for all of these reasons, it is highly unlikely that tunnels were ever used in downtown Eudora that were in any way connected to the Underground Railroad. Many people in Eudora believe that tunnels were built to connect the Pilla House at 615 Elm Street to the Pilla Department Store at 701 Main Street, to the Caw Valley Bank at 700 Main Street. People theorized that these alleged tunnels were built so Charles Pilla could walk from his house to his bank to his place of business without fear of being robbed. However, it is very important to note that no evidence has ever been uncovered that would suggest tunnels in Eudora between those buildings were built for those specific purposes. In reality, it would have cost a fortune to build those tunnels. Most likely, it would have cost Charles Pilla more money to build those tunnels than he ever would have been robbed of. Therefore, it's unlikely that the tunnels were built for that specific purpose. Many general stores, including the Pilla department store, sold goods on credit in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Typically, when a person made a purchase at the Pilla department store, the items purchased were added to an account or a tab that person already had on file at the Pilla store and that tab could be paid at a later date. Therefore, on any given date, Charles Pilla likely did not have that much cash on hand. Not having large amounts of cash on hand would further illustrate that Charles Pilla did not need a tunnel for safety or protection. There is a large valley that separates the buildings, particularly the Pilla House from the Pilla department store. Therefore, the tunnels between these buildings would have to go exceedingly deep. If tunnels do indeed exist, and if they do indeed connect these three buildings together, they were almost certainly not built by Charles Pilla for the purpose of secretly moving between the buildings. 
If tunnels do indeed exist, and if they do indeed connect these three buildings together, they were almost certainly built as utility tunnels. Leonard Holman was a leading and respected Eudora historian. Leonard Holman in 2009 developed a very persuasive theory regarding the existence of these alleged tunnels in Eudora. Leonard noted that tunnels were commonly found when restoring Victorian era homes in the later parts of the 20th century. The Pillip House was built in 1894. At the close of the 19th century, prior to the construction of municipal utility systems, gas plants were available to power homes and businesses in some communities. Typically, only the wealthier residents of these communities had their homes connected to gas plants via a pipeline. The gas pipelines were sometimes built in small tunnels, and these tunnels connected the various businesses and homes that were connected to the gas plant. In the early 20th century, a gas plant was located in Eudora, just west of downtown Eudora, near the intersection of 6th Street and Maple Streets. At the time these gas plants were in use, it was recommended that they be built at a distance from homes and businesses for the sake of safety. A malfunction at the gas plant could result in a fire or explosion. Gas lighting was not the safest in any case, besides having an open flame for light, a leak in the piping could result in disaster. Gas pipelines were built in tunnels so people could access the pipes for routine maintenance and in case of leaks in the pipeline. Therefore, the alleged tunnels between the Pillar House, 701 Main Street, and 700 Main Street were likely built in order to connect those buildings to the Eudora gas plant. After municipal systems were constructed in the 20th century, these old abandoned utility tunnels were largely forgotten about. As people ran across these tunnels in the latter parts of the 20th century, they tended to devise all sorts of fanciful and romantic interpretations for these tunnels. Many other communities, not just Eudora, also claim that utility tunnels in their communities were used for the safe passage of wealthy citizens. Therefore, Eudora is not unique to have this alleged theory. Suggesting that these alleged tunnels in Eudora were built for utility purposes is not the most exciting or romantic explanation. However, it is the most probable explanation for the existence of any tunnels in downtown Eudora. In this next section, we are pleased to present you with an interview with the current owners of the Pilla House, Sue and Monty Pearson. Sue and Monty Pearson will also lead a tour of the house. All right, I'll start. I'm here with uh, Sue and Monty Pearson, owners of the Pilla House in Eudora, Kansas. My first question is, Sue, do you remember the first time that you saw this house? And what can you tell us about that? My first, first husband was in love with this house and it was a roofing contractor. Hmm. And he did the roof on it twice, hmm. and he just fell in love with it and found out it was for sale, and took me and I thought, oh, there's no way I can take care of that house. <laughs> a lot of work, I'm sure. Yeah. So what year was that, do you remember? 75. Okay. And do you remember who owned the house then at the time before you? Yes. Oh my goodness. I'm sure we have their names in on file somewhere if it's yeah. uh because I think there was one set of owners between the Mulvey Pilla and then when you guys when, yes, when you Snyder. <laughs> okay, Snyder. So what kind of condition was the house in when you initially bought it then? It was in bad condition. It needed a lot of work. Everything every room needed to be redone. And we did it. I did it. <laughs> did that take a long time? was it a, a slow kind of room by room process? Did you do it all at once? It's a room by room. Yeah. Yeah. So did you live I in was, the... I was working full time. Sure. Did you live in the house then when you were restoring it? Oh yeah. Um, did you get the house listed on the state and national register? No, it was done before. So the Snyders got that listed on there, okay. And the federal. Yes, the state and national, which is the, yeah. for many years was the only building in Eudora on those registers. So the house was owned by the Pilla family until <laughs> Mulvina Pilla's death. Do you have any stories of Mulvina Pilla that you've been told over the years? or? She was a strange lady. Okay, how so? She never left the house, mm -hmm. never liked to leave the house. She taught piano lessons and they, the students, of course, would come to the house. She'd order groceries and they'd deliver them right to the house. And she wouldn't, wouldn't socialize with anybody. What's the word they use? Spin was she like a spinster? Was that a term just, they used back just then? That or means a not married. Yeah. 
kind of like a rec, kind of like a recluse maybe. Yeah. But she, but she would have people come in the house then to teach piano. Just children. Children. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Are there any legacies of the pillars in this house that you can still observe today? Or is the whole house really a legacy of the pillars? It really think? is the whole house. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> Monty, do you remember when the first time when you saw this house and what you thought about it? <laughs> yes. Uh, I was best man at Sue's wedding and her husband best man at my wedding. Both of them passed away. And um, we got together about 15 years ago, and uh, since then I've worked probably six, seven hours a day for years and years <laughs> restoring different things. Wow. So, the pay was good, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the foundation itself, uh, the sand in it, the mortar had just turned back to sand. So I went around the whole foundation, reset all the limestone rocks, secured them, secured the basement from the inside. That was a big, big, big yeah. job. And you were telling me that the basement was dirt or? Dirt floors. Dirt floors. So we poured concrete. Yeah. And uh, now I have my shop in the basement. Very good. Does the house require a lot of ongoing maintenance work then, it seems? Is it, does it ever seem like you're, okay, we've done everything, or does something new pop up then? Just little things yeah. now. We've got yeah. all the major things yeah. taken care of, uh, but every once in a while, some small thing will, but nothing major. Sure. That's good. Um, has there always been a lot of community interest in this house since yes. you've lived here? Do people still, would people knock on your door and ask for tours yes. in the past? <laughs> do they still do that? They still do occasionally. Okay. They drive by and say, we sure like your house. Could we take a, could sure. take a look at it? Yeah. And sometimes we let them do it and sometimes we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very nice of you to do it sometimes. Um, I did see, did you sell uh, antiques here mm -hmm. at one point? Mm -hmm. What was that about? Why were you, was that, was this like an antique store then? Or? Yeah. Okay. It was. <laughs> Interesting. Pillow House Antiques. Okay. Very cool. Um, so, you, Sue, you've been here now for... 46 years. 46 years, and Monty, you've been here for... 16. 16, so I imagine you'll be here for many more so I think it's safe to say the house is very important to the both of you it's probably oh. more than just a house it's oh. probably absolutely a, an important part of your we'll be here till health takes us away yeah well good I'm sure yeah um, is there anything else you'd like to say about the house it is really really well constructed yes. I can show you in yes. the attic Kelly's cell phone a wood mill, they harvested the lumber, cut the lumber. The people that build it, it's my understanding, were German natives mm. that Pella brought in. Sure. You can see those jack rafters coming in on those angles. You can't slide a piece of paper in them. Mm. They're perfect. <laughs> You'll see that in the attic. Very good. Okay. All right, yeah, thanks. That's That concludes the interview part. All right. Okay. Start with the dining room. Is there anything you'd like to point out in the dining room of note? This built-in <clears throat> cabinet. Now, is is this uh, original woodwork here? Oh, yeah. Everything. Every bit of it. Yes. We never painted anything. Wow. And it's all hand up. Yeah. Nobody ever painted it before us either. Mm, that's good. But look at the door, the door, how thick it is. Yeah. Alexa. That's an in, that's an interior oh. door. <laughs> like, why would they have it so thick? And to put it back up. Yeah, looks like. This door in here, these sliders. We have three fireplaces. That looks to be pretty old. I would think maybe that's original. Or, oh yeah, that's know. original. 
Actually, the frame is not. Mm. The one that was in here was not very pretty, and my mm. husband found a new one. Okay. A different one, not new. Nice. Now, did the pillows have live-in help, do you think? Oh, I'm sure they yeah. must have. So there'd be a maid's, maid's room, maid's quarters in here, do you mm -hmm. think? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, maid's room, yeah. maid's stairway, so that, yes, it goes from her room, and it has a dumb waiter, and here's, I'll show you one thing, before they built these cabinets there, she would cook the food in the kitchen, and they would pass it then through this doorway right here. I see. Yeah, see they that passageway so that the food would be passed directly out. Very fancy. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Is this uh an original water closet, do you think? Or was it this was a, a summer kitchen. Oh, this, this in here was mm -hmm. the summer kitchen, okay. Right. And our outhouse out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's two holer, one for a small child, one for an adult. My grandson that's an engineer was hunting work when he was in high school. New floors, new ceiling, all painted inside. <laughs> Interesting. Why uh, is this the uh, the the maids? This the is this is the maids. That's the maids. Okay. It's full of clothes. Uh, That's all right. We don't have to. Coats and stuff. We can just show it. Yeah, you can see the stairway. You can stick your cam and show it up if you want to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That's the worst. When he is it go around the corner? So this wallpaper. Now about the ceiling, do you think that tin is original? No, that came from Wilson, Kansas, a drugstore oh. up there. Interesting. The ceiling originally was down acoustical tile down over the, mm -hmm. the wood here. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it doesn't have the same. Uh, and we raised the ceiling and all the pipes and stuff in there. Hmm. And my first husband was a roofing contractor, and he. Built, raised it up. When I was hunting out in western Kansas and found this ceiling is in terrible shape. Wow. But it's never been repainted since we did it first time. Wow. Interesting. You can go in the bathroom if you'd like. The old There's summer kitchen? Summer kitchen. It's our bathroom. According to Leonard Allman, he's, he, he claimed that the first toilet in Eudora was in this house. So he claimed I'm sure it probably was. But I also, he also said they probably still needed an outhouse because during times of uh, drought, they didn't have enough water in the cistern to right. pump up into, oh. the, into the tank. We're in some pumps downstairs now. And then the big tank is lead lined in the attic. That gave him water pressure through the house. I think that's, yeah. The floor, we think, came from Robinson Gym. <laughs> Where Katie used to play. Yeah, I want to show a picture. Hold on a second. It had the, the markings of a basketball court on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's where the Jayhawks played before they moved into Hoke Auditorium. Yeah. So, that, 100 years ago. I used to play basketball up there as a child. No. My father was a professor. Ah. You want to see the basement? Yeah. It's probably as interesting as anything. It's a 
that pipe. This is a piston pump. You pump it like this. Pump it up through the dumb water. This was the dumb water. And up to the highest level, there's a big lead tank up there that would supply water pressure all the way through. You know where the cistern is located? Oh, yeah. I, is it still there or is it Yeah, filled? they're both there. Hmm. Interesting. Two of them. One here, one there. And this is my shop. Like I said, this was all dirt. Yeah. Second set of stairs, it looks like. That room was in the worst shape of all of them. Oh, yeah. The old rock walls were crumbling, so I fixed them up and then I sheet rocked it. Ah. Can't do the work if you don't have the tools. Yeah. How'd you get all the cement down here? Pumped it. <laughs> it must have taken forever to... You know, you know a tube, yeah. a big pump, pumped yeah. it all down. This is the coal room. The coal came in through this window. They just fill this room full of coal. But that window up there is where they just bring it in. And the coal furnace set right here on this is where the went into the chimney big pot stove there. Monty was saying this is where the coal furnace would have been. Yeah. What's this thing here? Yeah, that's for the fireplace oh, yeah. upstairs. You okay. Know that. And the ashes that come down here and they clean the ashes out. Sure. Yeah. That's the base for the fireplace upstairs. Ah. The one in the uh, living room? Yes. I found a picture of the floor. This is a photo of the uh, floor with basketball markings, the floor here in the kitchen which uh, may have come from Robinson Gymnasium. The University of Kansas, which was the basketball court there before Hoke Auditorium opened in, I believe, the 1920s. Do you know what year this picture's from, Sue? Yes, we, we, were, we took the linoleum off of it before we stripped it down. We were gonna have it, we were gonna tear the floor out and someone said, Better see what's underneath it before you tear it yeah. out. You want us to come in there? Yeah. Okay. You can come in there. <clears throat> this had the big grand piano hmm. in here, which we put in there, and hmm. and we couldn't couldn't even give it away. Oh, I'm sorry. You're okay. Here's the plaque for the oh. National Register. That's cool. Up we go. This was our bedroom. 
So is this the master bedroom of the house then? Yes. Yeah. All right, Charles Pill estate. that come on and all through the house. Oh, that's convenient. <clears throat> this was my daughter's room, Carrie. <clears throat> uh, how old was she when you, when you guys moved in here? She was in fourth grade. Oh, okay. So they all would have grown up here pretty much then. You're the other two didn't. They were oh, already. I see. Flew the coop. I see. <laughs> that door goes through to the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. That's just a closet. Mm -hmm. Now here's the first bath of the new door. So this has been here the whole time, do you think? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, Jacob, this would have been quite luxurious for the 1890s. Oh, yeah. So this was the uh, probably the only water closet originally then, I yeah. think. Sure. chain, flush the toilet. <laughs> yes, you. This cat's going to star in the whole thing. Yeah. You've never seen <laughs> This is the maid's room. Oh, okay. Interesting. There's a stairway that you saw from down below. <clears throat> Take it you never had any living maids here? No. <laughs> it's kind of one comes every two weeks. Yeah. Maids don't typically uh, live in anymore. That was more of a 19th century phenomenon. That's how the museum used to smell before we renovated it. Well, it's art. Actually, the, the attic at the museum smells like this, too. And that was where you, that was where you guys used to mm -hmm. sleep, wasn't it? Same brick our museum's made out of that really soft brick. Mm -hmm. So the water I would take it get cut, pumped up into then mm -hmm. <clears throat> to create running water. Yeah, and that's the central back. I think Eudora got indoor plumbing really until the 20s or 30s, you know. And that was my mother's. Hmm. That's wonderful. Did 
just a little bitty woman. <laughs> and uh, these things are heavy. Yeah, they're pretty big. They're on wool. Mm. This short film, The History of the Pillow House, first debuted to the public at the Eudora Area Historical Society's May Program Meeting on May 16th, 2024. After the film's conclusion, Eudora Area Historical Society Executive Director Ben Terwilliger and the current owners of the Pillow House, Sue and Monty Pearson, answered questions from the audience. This next section of the film is the Q&A session which was held after the debut of the film. Thank you. Like I said, it's not exactly the slickest, but I think it comes out okay. So, uh, thank you. Uh, and if they wouldn't mind, I'd like to recognize Sue and Monty Pearson. They're here with us right now. Say what? They're not lazy. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Sue or Monty? Since you were, since you mentioned about the, what was it, the pipes or what, what was it, the, the tunnels or something? Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, was was the career of the house like was his main goal like was his main goal trying to like he can walk in to say more or? There's no real evidence with the tunnels as far as I've been able to find out. Some people claim there's tunnels for people to, to travel in secret. My theory, which I presented in this film, is that it, they were utility tunnels. So that they, they connected these different buildings so they could run gas pipes to them. That's my theory. I don't, there's no uh, definitive answer as far as I know. I'd just like to make one statement. The door is so lucky to have it. Doing things to benefit Eudora, we need to give the Eudora her historical society for Ben all the support we can give him because yes. uh, not a not a thankless job. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Monty. Appreciate it. Monty is the is the archway where you can see the archway and the bricked up that looks like a tunnel. Can you still see Just it? It's a square house? door. Oh, it is. It's solid brick. And it's bricked. Okay. One time it caved in outside quite a ways and uh, took two big, big dump trucks to fill that in. Wow. So whether well, it was a tunnel, I don't know. Yes. But I know it caved in and we had to put two dump trucks. Full of the, dirt. the old building at the end of 7th Street uh, across from the bank. The old Peach Garage building, I know it had an archway and it was bricked in. And you could see it and it, it looked similar to what was in it. Yeah. Because I've been in the house before, before you guys actually well, moved in. He isn't here tonight. I don't see him, but he and two other boys said they walked in that tunnel. Yeah. I, I will tell you what his name is, but he's a gentleman <laughs> like that went to school here. Right. And at one time, after Mrs. Pellet's death, they were able to get inside the building. And he said he, he wasn't bricked up at that time. Yeah. Gary Gregory, Gary and Sue Gregory lived in there for a while, but that must have been, I don't know if they rented it from Snyder's? No, they were in the process of, of buying it from Snyder's. Okay, okay. Because I, I know that was a long time ago, and I went in there when they owned it. Or, or when they lived there. They never owned it, I don't think. They were buying it. <clears throat> they were buying it? Okay. She had a bad car wreck. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie remembers that. And I do too. Yeah. The house was built, it cost $10,000 to build it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you spent more than that on it. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for coming and showing interest in our home. Yeah. It's a remarkable place. This is Sue's house, not mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm the maintenance man. Pay is good. I pay. I give them a raise every year. Yeah. <laughs> Old zeros. That's great. Thank Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, I'd 
lot of old buildings and historic places tend to have like stories of paranormal or are there anything like that you've ever experienced no. uh, in the house? Nothing. No. Charles. Oh, we, we blame things on Charles lots yeah. of times. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Charles. <laughs> Do you ever use the fireplaces anymore? No. no. I didn't, I didn't we, think. We, it's we old soft that. brick, the mortar's bad in it. We changed I'm a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many houses. That, well, there's a fireplace when I started up. I didn't figure you still use no. it, but I, I wasn't sure. I remember one. You could just see the fire going up the chimney right through the sides of the oh, chimney. Oh, <laughs> pictures that you first showed, um, like one of the original pictures of the house, it said that it had an original tower. Did that tower get destroyed and then be rebuilt? The tower has been rebuilt. It looks, it looks just like it used to. Yes. I built it on the ground. And you saw one picture. Just she had a sheet of plywood there, mm -hmm. hooking a rope on it. Uh, every piece was numbered. It was all screwed together, took it all apart. I'd pull it up on a rope, reassemble it, rebuild it. And then cool. we had to rip it. That's cool. Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah. Have you guys found any neat artifacts or anything in the yard? No. We've had guys out there with metal detectors who never found anything. <laughs> took it back. He found an old, what I, Civil War putty ball, like this fired out of uh, rifles before there were rifles in them. Was the old coal furnace still in there when you moved no, in? No, I've never seen it. That's a fabulous house. It's fabulous. We've enjoyed working on it for the yeah. most part. <laughs> She's enjoyed me working. <laughs> Done a tremendous job. It seems to have a very long front yard. Was there something along the street beforehand? Originally, the street came right up to the bottom of those steps. Oh. There's two hitching posts where they used to hitch the horses. Okay. But the original road came right up to the bottom of that hill. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. I appreciate your pen. And young Zeus is here. <laughs> the Pilla family profoundly shaped Eudora's history and identity. Many of Eudora's leading residents were members of the Pilla family. The Pilla family came to Eudora as humble immigrants, but through years of hard work, they transformed their family into one of Eudora's wealthiest and most successful families. Eudora was a quintessential immigrant community. And no story is more quintessentially American than a story of an immigrant family achieving success through hard work. The story of the Pilla family is the same story that millions of other immigrant families have made throughout American history. And it is a story that continues to the present day as immigrants continue to move to the United States, just like the Pilla family, to pursue their dreams and to improve the lives of their families. The Pilla family legacy lives on through the Pilla department store building at 701 Main Street, Pilla Park, which is located just north of 701 Main Street, and the Pilla House. The Pilla House has been a Eudora landmark for 130 years. Thanks to the hard work of Sue and Bonnie Pearson, the house will likely continue to be a Eudora landmark for many additional years. Thanks to the preservation work done to the Pilla House by Sue and Bonnie Pearson, future generations of Eudora residents will be able to enjoy the Pilla House in the same way that previous Eudora residents have also enjoyed the house. Thank you for watching this short film on the history of the Pilla House. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the Eudora Community Museum's YouTube channel.